Hello all. Banner ads are rectangular image or text ads that occupy a spot on screen. They stay on screen while users are interacting with the app and can refresh automatically after a certain period of time. This tutorial shows you how to integrate banner ads from AdMob into a Unity app. Before starting there are a few initial steps required towards displaying AdMob ads and earning revenue. These steps are common to implementing any ad format. I have made a separate tutorial on that as part of this series to implement AdMob ads. You might want to check that out. The link to the tutorial is provided in the description. The first step towards displaying a banner is to create a banner view object in a C Sharp script attached to a game object. The constructor for a banner view has the following parameters. 1. Add unit ID. Add unit ID is the AdMob add unit ID from which the banner view should load ads. 2. Add size add size is the AdMob add size you'd like to use. 3. Add position add position is the position where the banner ad should be placed. The add position enum lists the valid add position values. It is important to note how different ad units are used, depending on the platform. You'll need to use an iOS ad unit for making ad requests on iOS and an Android ad unit for making requests on Android. For greater control over where a banner view is placed on screen than what's offered by ad position values, use the banner view constructor that has X and Y coordinates as parameters. The top left corner of the banner view will be positioned at the X and Y values passed to the constructor, where the origin is the top left of the screen. In addition to using an ad size constant, you can also specify a custom size for your ad. The sample code above contains an ad unit ID and you're free to request ads with it. It's been specially configured to return test ads rather than production ads for every request, which makes it safe to use. However, once you register an app in the AdMob UI and create your own ad unit IDs for use in your app, you'll need to explicitly configure your device as a test device when you're developing. This is extremely important. Testing with real ads, even if you never tap on them, is against AdMob policy and can cause your account to be suspended. Once the banner view is instantiated, the next step is to load an ad. That's done with the load ad method in the banner view class. It takes an ad request argument, which holds runtime information, such as targeting info, about a single ad request. Here's an example that shows how to load an ad. That's it. Your app is now ready to display banner ads from AdMob. To further customize the behavior of your ad, you can hook into a number of events in the ad's lifecycle, loading, opening, closing, and so on. Listen for these events by registering a delegate for the appropriate event handler, as shown here. The on ad failed to load event contains special event arguments. It passes an instance of handle ad failed to load event args with a message describing the error. The on ad loaded event is executed when an ad has finished loading. The on ad failed to load event is invoked when an ad fails to load. The message parameter describes the type of failure that occurred. On ad opening method is invoked when the user taps on an ad. If you're using an analytics package to track click throughs, this is a good place to record one. On ad closed method is invoked when a user returns to the app after viewing an ad's destination URL. Your app can use it to resume suspended activities or perform any other work necessary to make itself ready for interaction. When you are finished with a banner view, make sure to call the destroy method before dropping your reference to it. I hope this helped you. Please consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell button to show your support.